2 has entered the podcast. Welcome, welcome back, people, to Player 2 has entered the podcast. That podcast where we talk about video games, nerd stuff, and just two friends catching up for the week. I am your co-host, Mike, a.k.a. MC Paperstacks, and with me, as always, is my co-host with the co-most... Derek, a.k.a. Full Metal Merc, back again with another episode, baby. That's right. We're catching up with y'all this week, so we want you to catch up with us. And fortunately, that ain't going to take that long, because ain't shit happened this week. Not. We were actually going to have a guest on, but unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, we had to delay. So I was smart not to go ahead and call an audible on who was going to join us. I've learned my lesson. (laughs) I've done that in the past, and it didn't work out. So it's a little disappointing. I was excited to have our friend on, but again, it's just delayed. It's a rain check. We will have our friend on later on. So don't worry about that. In the meantime, that means that we get to talk about what if this week, because none of our guests ever watch what if. (laughs) Right. What if our guests watched what if? Yeah. What what if if our guests we watched? Yeah. What if they did? (laughs) Then it would be a much different podcast. Um, right. Sometimes I feel like that's a blessing, though. When you have three people on, all slobbering over the same show, then it's like a three-hour <laughs> episode. Remember when, um, I think it was Lady Momo Chan, remember when she was on? Uh-huh. She was geeking out with us. I think that was like damn near two and a half, almost three hours, that episode. It was insane. Yeah, was that was the only episode that I've had an issue with trying to upload to our platform because it was too large. The file damn. was too large. I had to reduce the quality of the file in order to fit it on our platform. How nuts is that? That's crazy. That is crazy. I don't expect it's going to be a long one tonight, despite my rambling, because... There's just not a whole lot of news this week. Yeah, I'm barren. But screw it, man. Let's get into it. So what if episode eight? Now, we talked last week about, you know, Party Thor and the direction of the series, where it's going, where it's been, and how, you know, we can't really come to expect certain things and how we have friends that, you know, are starting to hate the show and don't want to watch it anymore. And then then this episode happens. And, um, hmm. You gotta have a little faith, baby. <laughs> I don't even know if we can really talk about it. I mean, is is saying anything about the episode a spoiler at this point? I mean, if you know the episode title, we don't have to get too far into it. But you know, it talks. This, I'm gonna put up a spoiler about... warning, anyways, just in case. Like we don't have to spoil everything, but I want to say spoiler because the very concept of this episode is not something we can easily dance around. And it is a big spoiler, I feel like. Yeah, Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they if they watch the last episode, then they'll know what this episode is about if we just say, you know. Like, it's not something that... Yeah, but the, the, very, the very fact that you're saying if they watch the last episode tells them that they're linked, and that's a new thing for what if. True. And the fact that they're linked means multiverses are linked. Mean you know what I mean? Like, uh, here we are. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spoiler. If you haven't already hopped off, I hope you did. Spoilers, we we have spoilers. we have timestamps in our show notes for a reason. Click forward. You do not want to ruin this for yourself if you followed what if at all. That said, your oh, I want to see more of that came true. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. We got Vision Ultron. With all the Infinity Stones yes. showing up to Party Thor's world. Now, they didn't directly connect to that. They, they showed the universe where Vision Ultron came to be, where basically Ultron got Vision's body and how that right. all played out. And it played out uh-huh. way worse than you could ever imagine. Oh, my God. Bro. Yeah, Bruh. literally, uh, it was basically the actual comic Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. And not the like the movie that we got. It was like uh, maybe that's minor. why everybody hated Age of Ultron because it was kind of flaccid yeah, and didn't really go as hard after... as the comic. Yeah, yeah, they shouldn't have named it after the comic. They shouldn't have. Mm. And I myself haven't read the comic, but I've seen like clips. And I've seen what Ultron looks like mm-hmm. in the comic, and he looks like this, and it looks dope. Yeah, but it's like you know they didn't they shouldn't have called it Age of Ultron. But that's the thing with movies now; they like to use age and rise and yeah, just like dawn it's well, like it's, it's they probably with, saw the name of the comic and they're like that shit's dope let's change yeah, the story though <laughs> exactly. and then but think yeah, about uh, how pissed off people would be i don't know right but yeah this episode was fucking bonkers 
It was bonkers. I was like I like I said last week. I was looking down at my phone because it was just kind of boring. This week, I was just I started out looking at my phone, and then as soon as the episode really started, I was just like, "Well, let me put the phone down because I can tell they're giving me what I want this week." No, I was glued <laughs> to the tube from jump Ooh, because you had yeah. you had uh, the watcher kind of hinting at the fact that Ultron won or whatever, and then you had that bomb ass action scene with oh my god Black with Widow Hawkeye and Hawkeye. And Black it was Widow. good. Ooh. When they're fighting yeah, all the robots. Hawkeye was, was like, not oh, missing. Wow. It was amazing. Yeah. It was, I, I, I think yeah. it's so funny out of all the heroes on Earth that they survived just because they were up in the air. <laughs> right. Ain't, what, what, no other airplanes? What, no other superheroes taking a vacation? What's going on what now? I'm saying. On. But, yeah, the fact that they keep killing Tony Stark in every single one of these. What if Tony Stark <laughs> survived? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> and they keep doing Captain Marvel dirty, too. <laughs> A little bit. I mean, they show how powerful she is, but she even when when she gets to flex, because I think she flexed her full power on Vision, Ultron, and this. Oh, she definitely did. And it just mm, well, he was like, Captain Marvel. Like, yeah. It makes you wonder if Tony Stark dying is one of those points in time that's immutable, kind of like the concept they explored in the Doctor Strange episode. Well, I mean, I don't know if it would be like that in every universe, because obviously in our, oh, you mean just yeah, because he dies in ours. Well, eventually he's going to die, like, you know. Yeah, that's... but he, he dies early every yeah. single time. We haven't seen a universe yet where he dies of old age. Right. Just saying. <laughs> maybe <laughs> he needs to die. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's uh, it's a 10-year span of time, of course, so there's that. But... Right. Age of oof, Ultron was working everybody, mm-hmm. and the story was actually compelling. I really need Black Widow and Hawkeye to figure this out. Yeah, because this is not good. And then when they get to the point where they kind of start to figure it out and it doesn't work out quite as planned, I'm like, no. Uh. And then there's this bad ass scene with Hawkeye and this bad ass shot, not of his bow and arrow, but just a shot of Hawkeye. No, no, I know. The cinematography yeah, he, in this episode oh was just, God. wow. I was like, <laughs> if good. this was, it reminded me of, you know, an Aquaman when they're diving into the trench. And all of the, well, I guess they're called the trench, are coming up out of the water trying yeah. to attack them. It was it a reminded good me of that. I was like, ooh, baby. Yeah, James Wan <laughs> was flexing for sure. Right. Just give me some of that, please. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, baby. Every but, time I ooh. see a shot like that, it always takes me back to Gandalf fighting the Balrog when they, they oh, fall yeah. into that open chasm. Mm-hmm. That's the first time in cinema that I remember seeing a shot like that where you have something so large and huge and threatening and then you pan out. And then yeah. you see how big the world around them is, and it's just like mm-hmm. striking. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. striking. So yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's yeah, it's beautiful. We can go on and on, but the big thing about, and we're just gonna go full spoilers. Cause, okay, fine, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah let's I'm go okay full spoilers. The big thing about this episode, well, one of the big things is that Ultron is the Watcher's head, huge, right, right. The Watcher's head, is big head. As shit, so big. <laughs> No, it's that Ultron senses the Watcher like many characters have when they've reached a certain level of power in this in the What If series. Mm-hmm. They start to notice that there is somebody watching them. And he notices, and he's like, I can see you. And the Watcher's like, what the hell? He's like, oh, change the channel. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Change he's the like, channel. Ooh, click, 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 click away. And then Ultron busts in on his ass. Just like, like Out of nowhere. Oh, man. Look just, at all these universes. Oh, well, it was funny because... <laughs> Ultron basically won, right? He right. conquered every world in his universe, which is no small feat. I mean, they showed him going around just ego, bodied, Asgard, bodied. <laughs> like every Sakaar, Sakaar yeah. done. Every world that we've ever seen displayed in the universe of Marvel, he went around and just wrecked. Then, you know, the Watcher is narrating his life, like, and then he realized he was sad because he, he completed his purpose, so now what? And then Vision's like, is somebody, like, speaking my thoughts? Who Who is that? Right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, when he busts in, he's like, oh, look at all these other universes I can bring to order, toys. quote, unquote, <laughs> that I can bring peace in our time to. And I was like, oh, no, we're in one of those. Stop him, please. Right. Right. And then he starts basically boxing the watcher. <laughs> yeah. 
and the watcher actually starts putting up a fight. I was like, oh, I didn't know the watcher got down like this. Yeah. When he put on his full armor, we just go call it the full armor of God. Yeah, right. <laughs> he put on the full armor of God. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, I'll try you in for it. Nah. <laughs> Why you got holy power? <laughs> right? But yeah, man. And, and then, I mean, it wasn't enough still. But the fact that the Watcher is powerful enough to go toe-to-toe with Ultron with all the Infinity Stones. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing that was I was tripping me up. I put the Watcher on the level, if not above the level, of the TVA. Right. For those who watch Loki, the Time Variance Authority uses Infinity Stones like paperweights. Right. So who gives a shit if Ultron has all the Infinity Stones? The right. Watcher should be able to pair up with that. I thought. Maybe well, not. I don't know. Well, also, the TVA exists in a space outside of time. Yeah. So they don't have the same effect. Yeah, they but got some dragged, yeah. interesting toys for sure. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he dragged the Watcher into actual reality. And that's when he was having the issue. That's true. But, that's true. And every time he punched him, they were like in a different multiverse. Yeah. Which was that whole sequence, the fight between the two of them was just like it was fantastic Beautiful. visually. It was so cool. Yeah. I had, and I had I'm a not, really good time. I, with it. I'm not a huge fan of the art and animation of the show. Like it's fine, but that fight, I was like, Oh, this is cool. Like, yeah, I agree really with you. Good. It's the art is serviceable, but the faux kind of computer generated animation, I'm not a big fan of either, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, and it, we, it, yeah. it gets the job done, certainly. Right. So. And then we end on the watcher basically having to run away with his tail between his with his head between his legs. Yeah. Which I mean, it's gonna take <laughs> right. all day to How? get that big ass head through anybody's legs. <laughs> exactly. And he ends up where our friend evil doctor strange was at the end of episode four in his little what was left of his universe basically Mm -hmm. and he basically tells me he needs his help and i'm like oh that's what we're doing here okay yes what i think is going to happen what obviously is going to happen is that everyone from the episodes that we've seen prior the washer is going to gather them together so that they can fight ultron and it's going to be some sort of quasi avenger style story that okay so we'll grab Captain, Captain Carter. Carter, right. Mm-hmm. And then I'm guessing Star-Lord T'Challa and his crew. Yeah. Then we'll grab... Um, Maybe Captain Marvel from the party world Thor. Okay. What was episode three and about? Thor. I think that... Was that zombie? No, no, that was later. Maybe that was three? Star-Lord. No, two was Star-Lord. Okay. Well, there was one where all the Avengers died. That was three. That okay. Was three. So maybe yeah. maybe Loki from that one, oh, I maybe. guess, or Ant Man. I don't know. It's yeah, gonna either be interesting way, it's to see be, what he does. Cool. Yeah, I yeah, didn't even think about cool. him grabbing it from all the prior episodes. That would be interesting, mm-hmm. um, or at least a few of them. Like I said, it'd be cool to see Captain Carter. But what's she gonna do? I mean, you know what, Captain America. What what's he gonna do? Yeah, well, he's gonna he hold does what he can Thanos's do. fist for a few frames, and Thanos right. is gonna go what, and then punch him. <laughs> Um, hey, but in 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 game he was actually giving him to work for a little bit. No, I know. I that's the thing I love about Captain America. Like he's just full of surprises. Right. And you can do this I mean, all day. And that ass. Whew. That's America's mm. ass. Num. <laughs> he said num. <laughs> num. Oh man. Speaking of num num, let's let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the video games we've been playing this week. This is a video game podcast, despite yeah, all the nerd yeah. stuff we get into in the beginning. So, I gotta know, this week, what have you been getting into, man? What you been playing? So, I've been playing Monster Hunter Stories 2. I forget what I said about it last week, but the story moves at such a snail's pace. Oh, I know. Like, it's so slow. The main thing around the game is you get this egg, and it's supposed to have, like, a baby Rathalos in it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, when's this egg gonna hatch? Two hours. When's the egg gonna hatch? Four hours. When's the egg gonna hatch? Six. Eight. Ten. 12 hours in, the egg finally hatches. Wow. And I'm just like, Jesus, why did that take so long? Literally, the story has not been advanced at all. It's just go slay this monster, come back to the village. Oh, no, guess what? You need to learn how to do this thing before we can let this egg hatch because we don't trust you. Okay, now I learned how to do the thing. But guess what? There's a monster somewhere. We need you to go kill it. Oh, guess what? There's another monster. I need you to go kill that, too. We can do it. We can kill the monster. And I'm just like, oh. Mm-hmm. The gameplay loop is not the best. But I do enjoy 
seeing the new monsters and getting the eggs and hatching them and seeing the special moves that they have. Like, that part is cool, but, like, it, the story just moved. If you're going into this for the story, don't. Just go into it to collect some monsters, Pokemon style, and just enjoy it for that. Because the story moves very slowly. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it picks up at any point and goes faster or anything. It gets more exciting, but I don't know. Uh, have you have you beaten it or played No, it I fell yet? off for specifically the reason you're mentioning now. It okay. was repetitive and boring to me. Which I yeah. it sounds so harsh for me to say, because there's a lot to like about Monster Hunter stories too. The art design, the monsters, like you said, the monster riding and the hunting and the den raiding and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I think everything. I mean, it's funny because I thought this would be the Monster Hunter experience for me because I feel like there's just too much stuff to do aside mm-hmm. from the gameplay in a regular Monster Hunter game, like. If, you know, the crafting and the preparing yeah. and the researching and the hunting and the finding and, and the, the battle for itself. the hour. Yeah, yeah. And they're just and if you don't prep right or you skip one corner, then you turn a twenty minute fight into a five hour fight. Yeah. And I mm, no. I don't want to bust out a wiki every time I want to fight a single monster. I just can't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Witcher does a really good job of taking a lot of different monster types and ways to deal with them from the lore and incorporating that in a very streamlined and quick way. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? The Witcher does an amazing job. The, wi- the Witcher does a fucking, considering all the stuff that he has at his disposal and needs in order to get the edge on a monster, it does a fantastic job at it. Mm-hmm. And I was and hoping. I fell off of that because there was too much to do, <laughs> which I feel like is a better problem than there not being enough. <laughs> true. True. And I think honestly, the best thing about the Witcher is you can have just as much fun going through the main story and be okay maybe doing a side mission here or there than trying to do everything. It's one of those games where I don't feel like I need to do everything because really, the to me, the side content in that game is more if you want to gain a level or two extra if you need it or if you just want to get some right. money, right? Mm-hmm. The main quests and then some of the, the side quests that are adjacent to the main quest, that's where it's at. Right, But I was kind of hoping Monster Hunter Stories 2 would be more like The Witcher. I'd have all my monster hunting stuff at my disposal, but it would be more streamlined because it's an RPG. And there's definitely aspects of that, like enemies that are, okay, this one, you can break a piece off of it to make it more weak. If you you use a hammer versus a sword, you're going to do better damage in this phase. If you use agile attacks versus their power... Blah, 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 right? Like, it has some yeah. rock, paper, scissors bullshit in there, which is cool, but it's it's almost too dumbed down. And then, yeah. like you said, when you pair it with the absence of a story where it, it moves at a snail's pace and nothing really happens until you get really far into it, with all these other games I got on my plate, I just don't have time for that, to be honest. Yeah, and the only reason it gets played now at this point is because it's the only game I have on Switch that I'm actively playing. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's... I play Monster Hunter like at nighttime. Your nighttime, like, kind of. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's my nighty nighttime game. Nighty nighttime. But another mechanic that really annoys me is that you cannot control any other characters in your party. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Like I don't directly. Like that. So it's like, yeah, sure, you might figure out that speed is what is going to help you win this battle in the head on against the enemy, but mm. your monster is doing whatever attack it wants to do, and if it doesn't have the proper attack type then you have to switch your monster out and do that. And then sometimes the enemy's no longer targeting that monster. Like, it's just, there's some weird stuff going on with it. Like, I like it. It's it's okay. But I don't know if I'm going to get through it. And it sucks because I bought it brand new. Oof. Because I just, I couldn't wait. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, I can't wait. I want to play this. Uh, I can't and believe then you so forgot many... that I have it. I can't believe you forgot that. Well, it's not even necessarily that I forgot. It's just I wanted it for myself because I thought this was going to be the Monster Hunter for me. Mm, yeah you thought that too and it it still could be just not as great as i thought it was gonna be because them trailers they had me hype i was like slobbering i was like another rpg on the switch and it's monster hunter yeah give it to me please the monster hunter world intrigues me so much Mm. i just can't get into the mainline monster hunter yeah and that's and that's okay i don't have that kind of time let's get a turn-based from software game let's get turn-based dark souls (laughs) in here maybe that's the dark souls for us (laughs) right but oh, man. oh, there was so many monster dens around that you can go in and get eggs. But it's like 
there's not that many monsters to have as many dens as there are. So it's, you're just grabbing the same type of egg over and over. Not only that, and then, the then you just skip them all together. Look, them den, the yeah. dens themselves oh, look exactly so the same. There's so, so much bland. copy pasting in this game. Yeah, it's oof. Uh, it sucks that I went from being so excited about the game when I got it to just being like, ah, I don't want to play. It. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I feel like it is a kid's game Mm -hmm. it's it's obviously aimed towards kids it's got the cutesy look to it Mm -hmm. and the battle mechanics are very simple i do feel like a child would be able to comprehend what's going on Mm. one of the things that i do find good about it is when you're creating your character my character's black black as hell dark as it could be the story sort of revolves around what your grandfather did in the past Mm -hmm. from the first game Mm because you're the you're the first game's grandson or granddaughter in cutscenes where they show the grandfather mm-hmm. and he's actually voiced, he is the color. He's black. Like, they make him black. I like that. Because <laughs> too many times you'll create a character and they'll show a character that's related to you, but they're just white or whatever other color mm-hmm. they're supposed to be, even though you're black. It's like, I'm black. Why are both of my parents white? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I did appre- I appreciated that. Even though we only got two, like two black hairstyles in it, I do appreciate that they went through the time to change the skin tone of someone who is your relative. <laughs> yeah, it seems like such a but simple yeah. thing, but you're right. It's often I, overlooked yeah. in the past. But yeah, so it gets it gets it gets five points for me on that. But we're gonna move on from Monster Hunter. I'm just making me feel kind of down because I really like I like the look of it and everything, but it's just it's so repetitive. Mm. Oh my god! Mm. But uh, the other thing that I'm playing is Lost Judgment. I yeah. finally grabbed a copy. I beat Judgment earlier this year, and I really enjoyed it. The funny thing about this game is it starts off with my least favorite part of the last game, and that's a tailing mission. Anything different about the tailing missions in this game versus the previous game? Okay, so they did change it a little bit. And arguably, they made it more difficult, which is weird. Instead of you finding a place to hide, you pull triangle to check your phone mm-hmm. or to blend in. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to necessarily hide anywhere. You can just blend in and open in an open space. But there's a meter that goes down as you use it. And when you stop using it, then it stops. So if you run out of your triangle blend in, then you're just going to get caught. So you have to use it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So I did not like that. I did not like that. I was like, why did y'all start the game with the worst part of the last game? And arguably made it more difficult. That's how the first game started. I'm pretty sure like that this you literally did a tailing mission in the beginning of the first game. And that's fine, but that was the first game. (laughs) I didn't know how much I was gonna not like tailing. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I don't really like this. And then as the game went on, you know, there was other stuff that I could dig into, but yeah, I just thought that was funny, but so far, played it for about an hour, nothing big's really happened yet, I think the main story is just about to kick off, and I'm interested to see where it goes. They added a new fighting style in this one, and I think, unfortunately, this is going to be the last Judgment game, because there are some issues with the actor who's portraying the main character. Mm-hmm. They use the likeness of some Japanese pop star or something, or oh, Japanese yeah. actor, and they're having issues with contracts and stuff like that so this might be the last judgment game which sucks because i really enjoyed that last game and i think this one is going to be good too you know some games have that shit that you have to dig through in order to get to the goodness and in in this case it's the tailing missions Mm -hmm. (laughs) so you know judgment is no stranger to controversy there is another i can't remember if it was like another character or a developer somebody was like associated with drugs and japan do not play that Mm-hmm. And there there was a chance it wasn't even going to be, it was going to be pulled and not even come stateside. So the fact that we Damn. even got it, I think, is a small miracle. But That's so interesting to me. The Yakuza developer, they're really good at implementing that formula with any kind of concept. I mean, we were talking recently about Fist of the North Star. Mm-hmm. Judgment itself is kind of a spinoff, right? Of Yakuza. Right. I think that should this be the last Judgment game, that's fine because they're still going strong and they could explore this kind of gameplay formula with yet another archetype or a different character. Yeah, I really cause... love uh, detective stories for sure. Mm-hmm. I think that's what really attracts me to judgment, but there's other character types. I think that we could play as in Camarocho and have just as good of a time. So, yeah. And plus I think the, 
think I read that the main series going forward, the Yakuza series, is going to be turn based, like yeah. how like a dragon is. So they're gonna have to come up with something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm but okay you with know that. It, it shouldn't be yeah it shouldn't be too hard. But yeah, that's what I'm playing this week, man. What about you? What you got going on? Okay, well I did finally pick the ascent back up. Okay. It had been long enough since I had completely lost my old save file, and I decided to go ahead and go back into it. It's just as fun as it used to be. It's kind of buggy. I mean, it's always been buggy, but the bugs are even more noticeable to me. And there was a bug where I almost couldn't track the main mission, and I had to do research to figure out where I was supposed to go. And then once I advanced to the area adjacent to the mission, it started tracking again. I was like, oh, thank God. I was like, do I have to start this game for a third time? No. I don't um, do it. But it's a bit of a slog because now I'm just going through the main missions instead of doing side missions, and I'm a little under-leveled, and I'm by myself. Mm. Like, I really need a buddy to play that game with. I really and do. And, you know, I was uh, I was listening to Gamer Friends last episode and how uh, Audio Nerd was praising you for <laughs> how you were able to describe the Yeah, that was really to nice me. of him, actually. Yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> That episode I'd be cracking up too, man. They're wild. <laughs> no, yeah. Their most recent episode. Guys, listeners, friends, fans, family. If you're not listening to Gamer Friends, you need to. Due to scheduling and everything, and hopefully this gets better for them because I know they hate it. They haven't been able to be as consistent. So a lot of times they'll have an episode and have to cover like the last month or two. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they do such a good job. Didn't they do such a good job? Yeah, like, yeah they did really. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had that skill. I feel like we struggle just to catch up for the week sometimes. Right. Uh, but they do a really good job of summing everything up. And yeah, that whole, not to really dive into their episode, but that whole theory about Jake from State Farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say much more than that, but Jesus Christ, yeah. Big Nick. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, I was in their Discord kind of laughing with them after the episode had um, popped out. I know you don't do Discord, but you should. You should get the Discord app on your phone. You would mm-hmm. get notifications for messages, and you can actually individually either mute or select which types of messages you get from the different channels. Like oh, okay. a lot of the channels, like their Destiny channel, for example, I have that muted because I'm not going to play Destiny, but... They have a channel specifically to chat about the podcast, one for news, one for gaming, one for, hey, does anybody want to play this with me? That type of thing. And right. that's how I got Cedric to play The Ascent with me. I just popped on like, hey, I'm playing The Ascent tonight. Anybody want to play? You know, oh, that okay. type of thing. Ooh. So, yeah, I mean, I, since both of us don't play online and we don't really have that robust of an online community yet, honestly, the Gamer Friends Discord, I'd start our own Discord if we were a little bit more popular. But for now, I'm fine being in their Discord. There's a lot of good people in there. So, yeah. But, yeah, the Ascent, I, I think I'm going to need a buddy. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll get some more people to play. And then I played more Evil Within and it's starting to i remember the difficulty really front loads in that game and then as you start to kind of get used to it and upgrade your aiming a little bit it becomes much easier like once you get more than one weapon Mm -hmm. and now i'm like oh yeah it's a lot less threatening once i get to this point in the game so i'm gonna be playing episode three tonight it'll be up by the time this episode uh, goes up of course but that actually brings me to something i wanted to discuss about twitch I think I might be pulling back on Twitch. Oh. I was looking in to start streaming on TikTok, and I actually found a third-party software that I could use to stream through OBS on TikTok, but unfortunately it's being really wonky, so I don't think that's going to happen. And I don't necessarily want to just point my phone at my TV every time I want to stream. Although I did try a live this week. I had a live with Ben. We were playing Aliens vs. Predator. (laughs) Yeah, it was a good time. Twitch is such a big ocean, and I'm a single drop in it, and I've realized that, you know, two things are either going to happen. Either I'm going to keep going, and then eventually I'll get traction, and I'll get somewhere, and that's great. I don't know how long that's going to take. Or I'm going to keep going, and I'm never going to get traction, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are only two options there are. And I realized yeah. at this point that my creative energy is probably better spent on this and on TikTok where we're uploading videos daily because we're getting a lot more interaction with the podcast and TikTok than I am on stream. Right. So I'm you not going to... knockers out, man. What's that? So you got to pull those knockers out. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what it is. I barely use the camera so no one can see my knockers. But No. Um, I use it on Friday Night Fright, so join me for that. All right. But no, I... <laughs> I think I'm going to pull back on the stream so I can focus on those other things 
and maybe just do it like once a week, like when I first started, and maybe just go one game at a time, that type of thing. Yeah. So things will slow down a lot more on that, and I'll probably start that starting next week. So for those who follow the podcast and the stream, there likely will not be a stream Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday. I think I'm just going to stick to Fridays. Okay. And I'm going to finish The Evil Within because I'm committed to do that. And then after that, I'll probably just play horror games the rest of the month of October. And then... Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then I'll just I'll pick a game. Maybe something that I've always put off and never really got around to finishing. Maybe I'll do a Star Ocean game. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to knock out one game at a time and let that just be my stream time for the week. And not worry so much about it. I'm going to kind of pull it back. I'm going to pull my stream back to its roots. Back yeah, when I was just streaming on Sunday nights and it was The Witcher, that's all I was doing. You know what I mean? Right. And it was beautiful. And it was beautiful. So we're gonna we're gonna bring it back to a simpler time and fill in the gap of all this other stuff that I've mm-hmm. been sampling, so to speak. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, as far as the other games I played this week, more Pokemon Radical Red. I did another TikTok, I don't know if you saw it, about the Dynamaxing. It. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that. Yeah. So the beginning of the video is me using my Kingler Bone Crusher in Sword and Shield <laughs> and showing what Dynamax looks like, of course, in Sword and Shield. And then it cuts to me playing Radical Red and I access a Dynamax Den in Radical Red and then you can see how that plays out and how graphically they kind of switch things around to make it similar to a Dynamax battle that you would have in Sword and Shield. So, mm. cool. yeah, it's pretty neat. So check that out if you're interested. I played this game called, I just on a humbug, because it's on Game Pass. I played a game called Planet Alpha. Have you played that before? Uh uh-uh, I've never heard of that. Think Limbo or Inside or any game where you kind of run from left to right and try to use your wits to survive, so to speak. Uh-huh. But the conceit here is that you're on an alien planet. It's very lush and beautiful, and the environments are very huge and... There's alien life, and it's largely uninterested in you, and there's some ruins here and there. But then it gets attacked by, like, hostile aliens, and then all of a sudden you have to kind of, like, sneak past them and try to survive. And then, of Mm -hmm. course, it aggravates some of the more aggressive flora and fauna on the planet itself that you also have to navigate past. And that's when the kind of game starts up proper. So if you like games like Limbo and Inside... In games that have you kind of run from left to right and it's kind of puzzle elements and platforming, this will probably be right up your alley. I really enjoyed it for the time that I spent with it and will probably go back to finish it. I think I got about halfway through. I was playing it over the course of a weekend with Ben and we were both like, what do we do? So (laughs) it was good times. He said it reminded him of the Broken Circle. Have you played Broken Circle? No, I haven't. Broken Circle is just where you play as, it looks like a little Pac-Man because it's a circle with a wedge cut out of it. Uh. (laughs) And you're like rolling forward and you meet friends along the way that maybe fit into the wedge and give you powers like to stick to things or to fly up. And again, it's just Mm -hmm. left to right trying to navigate across the world. But there's a little bit more of a narrative because the the circle will actually talk to people versus the silent protagonist you usually get in that type of game. Okay. I thought that was really cool that he recognized another game in this in the same genre. I was like, look at this five-year-old gamer. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Right. <laughs> so that was neat. Gamer. Gamer. <laughs> More Ghost of Tsushima. I'm pretty sure I streamed a little bit of Ghost of Tsushima last week, but I've been continuing to play it, and I did get past. I freed Uncle Daddy Shimura in the first chapter <laughs> and fought the coward who he was a, uh, he was like, open the gates. Open the gates. <laughs> did you open the gates? Remember that part? Open the gates. Yeah. <laughs> the acting in that game is really good. That's so good. It's re- that. Mm, God damn it! That I every time I go back, I forget. I mean, I remember. I should say because I have forgotten. Like just how good every aspect of that game is. Mm-hmm. But the performances in that game, especially Masako. Masako is the older woman, is right. That had to bury her entire family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah I like her. Oh, yeah, she's one of the standout characters for sure. But the performances overall are very powerful. Even Jin the Wet Blanket, Samurai. um, He's not, again, by virtue of being the protagonist and needing to be a little vanilla so people can identify with him, I guess. But he's obviously, he's got way more personality than, say, somebody like Hero on Dragon Quest. That's for sure. Right. (laughs) But uh, Hero! (laughs) I need a hero! (laughs) Uh, But no, it's, um, if you're looking for an excuse to go back... 
I think director's cut is worth it. It was a little kind of retready and slightly boring for me at first. But then once I got moving again and got into it proper, I was like, no, I like this. Right. Like if you cut out all the expiration, if you want to do that and you've already beaten the game, don't just beeline straight through the story. You're going to have a better time. Cool. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm pretty sure. I don't know if this is the director's cut or if it's like a post launch free DLC update, but all of the previous duels and certain missions have little like recycle or reuse gold symbols and you can basically replay them. Mm -hmm. So if you think of a particular duel, maybe from one of the tales or something that you've played and you've already beaten it and you thought it was really cool, you can go back and do it again, likely. Dope. Yeah, which I kind of dig. I think that's neat. I like that. I like that. Monday Night Brawlers, I played Dragon's Crown Pro. I like that game. Yeah. Or or what we used to say back in the day, Titty Crown. Right. (laughs) Titty Crown. (laughs) It's extremely horny. It's a Vanillaware yeah. game, so art style-wise, think Odin Sphere or Grim Grimoire. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's in the vein of like a beat em up with RPG elements, and it feels very much inspired by Golden Axe, you know, as yeah. far as the aesthetic, and there's some beast writing in it, stuff like that. And you have your classic characters, you got your sorcerer, your Amazon, Amazon your Dwarven Warrior, your Cleric, your Knight, yeah, different characters like that. And some of them are obviously easier to play solo than others. Some you're better off in a team, that type of thing. But it remains to be fun. I don't really see a whole lot of difference between Dragon's Crown and Dragon's Crown Pro. I think it already looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I think I picked up Pro on PSN because it was like super cheap. It goes on sale pretty often. So if you like... Those classic style beat em ups, but maybe enriched with really good art and RPG elements. There's a lot to go around there. There's a lot of loot in that game. And again, if you're annoyed or just don't want to see like over the top sexy, it doesn't get much more over the top than this. It does not. There is not a single female character in this game, save for maybe one or two, whose breasts are not comically large and constantly bouncing. Yeah. Um, it's a little insane, <laughs> to be honest. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, what are you going to do, Japan? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that <laughs> covers all the games that I played this week. So, it might be time to get into... The gaming news. Gaming news. And, again, I mentioned previously in the episode, it's going to be kind of light this week. And that's Okay. Hey, Every week fine. doesn't need to be a ton of news. We had a ton of news last week. We're still reeling from all the news from the direct, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I am quite satisfied. Satis- Bayonetta, baby. Yeah, I'm quite mm. satisfied with uh, everything that we heard. So, yeah. All right, let's get into it. So, you had actually sent this message to me earlier in the week, and I think I may have saw- seen it before. You might be the first yeah. to break it. I mean, to be honest, it's something I thought had already happened because we talked about it before. Yeah. But PlayStation, so- right? PlayStation officially bought Blue Point Games. And these mm-hmm. are the people that did various remasters on the PS3, but most notably Shadow of the Colossus on PS4. Mm-hmm. And I remember it was a few months ago, there was a leak from a Japanese developer or marketing employee where they leaked, uh, Welcome to the PlayStation family, Blue Point. And then they immediately had to delete the tweet because they're like, Whoops, that was the wrong one. What? We were supposed to talk about <laughs> House Marquee. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Shouldn't have had it in the drafts, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Shouldn't have had it in the drafts. But yeah, we, everybody saw this coming. I think even before there was that leak, it was just like they were making games for PlayStation primarily. And same thing with Insomniac. Like Insomniac was making games for PlayStation. People assumed that they were already owned by PlayStation or had like. Did Blue Point with... work on the Metal Gear Solid HD remake? I think they did. I hate to say this, but I kind of wish that Microsoft bought Blue Point. Yeah. And the only reason why, I th- I, because obviously their jam is the remakes, the ports, the re releases, and that's mm-hmm. going around a lot right now. While PlayStation definitely has, I think, a more robust and interesting backlog to do those types of titles with, will Sony take advantage of Blue Point the way that Microsoft would? I think so. I hope so. Yeah, I think they so. Haven't, yeah, they haven't they haven't given me a whole lot of confidence lately with Jim Ryan and the way he's like, why the fuck would anybody want to play them ugly ass PS3 games? Right. You know. But yeah, when you when you bring that up, 
and I, th- I think about how, yeah, Blue Point aren't the ones who originally developed Shadow of the Colossus. Sony owns so many IPs now where they can live, like they own Naughty, they own Naughty Dog, right? Do they? Do they? Do they? Well, Naughty Dog doesn't make games for anybody else, so let okay, so well, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google let's just that say that we're talking. Yeah, let's just say that Naughty Dog would be fine if Sony wanted to remake, have Blue Point remake one of their old games, like say, oh, I don't know, Jack and Daxter. <laughs> yeah, I Sony want... Sony is Naughty Dog's parent organization. Okay, yeah, so they do. Okay, they have so much to draw from. We can see remakes of Sly Cooper, Sucker Punch, or Insomniac. Sucker Punch, because it's also okay. Ghost of Tsushima. Oh yeah, that's right. Do they own Sucker Punch too? Oh Jesus Christ, I don't know. Let me Google that while we're Shit. talking. I'll, I'll take a look. Because you know, I know Microsoft bought a bunch of studios, but uh, <laughs> Sony kind of got a flex it all those. They own Sucker Punch and Insomniac. Yep, and Sony owns Sucker know. Punch. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, Microsoft had no choice. <laughs> they had no choice. They said we got it. We got to get Bethesda. We got to. <laughs> Microsoft's got like, uh, we got double fine. Right. Cool. Which I mean, uh, at the end of the day, people who are listening, like it, it's obviously just a point of business that these companies they're not really, but these companies don't really care about what the other company is doing. They're just yeah. And again, it's it's, it's not that I favor company. Microsoft. I favor their behavior this generation. But what I favor is For who's sure. going to utilize Blue Point to their fullest, their yeah. talents. Mm-hmm. And with Sony owning them, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's not like I, and who knows? I, access Maybe we is get cut a... off from me. But do, you know, does Sony give a damn? You know, right? I mean, if they didn't, they wouldn't have bought them. I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, we've seen studios buy. I mean, look at EA. They buy yeah, their developers all the time. Well, you know, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> need I remind you of the several studios that EA has yeah. bought and destroyed? Not that Sony yeah. has a rep for that, but Sony has a rep for not caring about classic games, game preservation, retro games, access to their back catalog. That you know, none of that seems to be a concern for them. Now, if someone convinces Jim Ryan, hey, we can remake this old game with the top, latest, best graphics, get Blue Point on it, maybe that might work. So maybe that's where yeah. they're going. Yep. And uh, another thing, I really want Sony to buy Konami. <laughs> Somebody needs to. Oh, boy. Can you imagine a remake or, well, yeah, let's just say a remake of like Symphony of the Night? Actually, you know what? Just... I don't want Sony to buy Konami. Oh, no. I want Nintendo to buy Konami. Here's why. Oh, here's why. Maybe. <laughs> because Nintendo, I mean, seems to be more friendly with classic IPs, especially of the Nintendo era. And then True. we don't have to worry about Konami characters like Snake and Castlevania not showing up in future Smash titles. If Sony right. owned Metal Gear Solid and Castlevania, they would never show up in Smash again. True. And, and I speaking of Smash, Simon's my I, man. I, I can't I, have that. I don't want to keep getting on tangents, but. What hap- What's next? Like, what happens next for Smash? Well, I mean, we're probably not going to see anything until the next full-on next Nintendo system comes out. And right. you know what? You're not going on a tangent, because that's a good segue into the next news story. So, All right. the Switch Pro oh, there died, <laughs> died with the OLED announcement, right? Wrong. Yes. Oh. No. Bloomberg. And several Ooh. other outlets have been reporting that 4K dev kits are in the hands of developers. Switch 4K dev kits. Oh They're out there. They were planning on releasing it. There was a chip shortage. That's why they didn't. And next year, we could see that Switch Pro dropping. Now, <laughs> when this news broke, Nintendo was like, hold on. No, it ain't. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they didn't. You lie. Nintendo categorically denying all of this. None of it's true. How dare you? Right. Bloomberg, guess the hell it is. We're sticking to our guns. We have reliable sources. Quit lying. Mm. Now, who are we to believe? I'm I leave it up to you, with, listeners. I think Bloomberg. just because of the... I mean, there was a mountain of evidence that it was going to be... You know, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, if you separate the OLED screen out, just the the chips and the technology and the patents and the research, I feel like we were about to get a Switch Pro, and I feel yeah. like that they were worried. Maybe they didn't want to compete 
with the other systems because people are still trying to grab those. Maybe they were worried about the chip shortage. I find it odd that Nintendo is worried about a limited quantity of something they're trying to sell since that seems to be their fucking business model. <laughs> right. Like, oh, you're telling us we can only sell a few of these and a lot of people will be left in the lurch and not able to buy them? Sounds like business okay. as usual. Right? <laughs> But also the fact that there's been such strong indication from reputable games journalism sources. If this was like comicbook.com, I'd be like, eh, you know what I mean? Or Screen Rant or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is like, you know, Polygon and Kotaku and Bloomberg. Like people are out here like, nah, we, we think there might be a Switch Pro actually. Yeah. So I don't know. All we can do is just sit back and wait and see, I guess, if there is a Switch Pro and I don't already have a Steam Deck by then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would I would tell our listeners if a Switch Pro is announced and it's hard to get one at first, don't pay scalper prices for it. Don't that. do not because I remember a time when the Switch was hard to get, mm -hmm. and now I can't. You could throw a rock and hit a Switch. Yep, out here there's like you these can swing a dead cat and hit have, three switches, right. <laughs> three switches, <laughs> and use them to hit your kid. No. <laughs> Oh man, I wish we yeah. had our guest on. They're southern. Oh, they would have had a, they would have had a great simile for that. But anyways, go ahead. But yeah, like you, you literally twenty, thirty switches in a store. Like every store you walk in, mm -hmm. not retail stores, oh, yeah, but like secondhand stores, like everywhere. everywhere, everywhere. I'm like Jesus. And the thing is, if you were trying to get back, get one back in the day when there was a shortage, there wasn't like a million games to play. You know, like right. you want to give the Switch time. There's probably not going to be a ton of... I mean, if you remember the advanced version of the 3DS, I mean, it only ended up having a small handful of games that could only mm -hmm. play on that system, right? The only one I could think yeah. of is Xenoblade. Yeah. I think uh, the US only got one <laughs> one See? exclusive game for the three, new 3DS. So, so if anything, hold off for that, because maybe Nintendo will be too scared to release games that can only be played on their Switch Pro, at least for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. We yeah, will see. Maybe. Speaking of interesting news confirmed real actual tangible news that i can give you for folks who have games pass marvel's avengers is dropping on game pass so if you were like okay. ah, pass i'm not giving them any money well i mean you can you can try it out on game pass if you want see if it's anything i know if a few folks who won't play it on principle because they won't get spider-man because spider-man is sony exclusive and you know what but even though spider-man is not coming out for it yeah it's not it's not yeah. it's not happening yeah, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> yeah, unless putting on Game Pass was like a last ditch effort to get some Microsoft money so they could put Spider Man out on it. But at this yeah, point, I... who's playing that game? Oh my god, it's so late. Like, I feel like the only people that played the Black Panther expansion are streamers. Yeah, like King Thuglas, I think, was all over yeah. it, but I can't yeah. think of anybody else. Yeah. So, so uh, I'll check it out. I have it still downloading in my Xbox. It's been days, it's like 150 gigs. I don't know why it's so huge. Um, have you played it yet? No, because I'm still downloading it to my Xbox. No, I mean like even before, like no, I only played the all. demo or the beta or whatever it was. Okay, yeah, it, uh, hmm. yeah, I I wasn't impressed by the beta, and then I heard all the stuff from other people, and I just didn't touch it because why waste my time? You know, yeah. I kept seeing it like directly from Square Enix for like twenty bucks, and I was like, should I just go ahead and buy the PS5 version for twenty bucks? Right, and I'm glad I I slept on that Waited. because yeah. here we are, free. Scarlet Nexus also Ooh. dropped on Game Pass. So I get a chance to play that. That's cool. Boy, uh, play that straight away. Yeah. Scarlet Nexus is fucking dope. Really? Is it better than Tales of Arise? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, that's my bias. Yeah. Like, I fucking loved that game. But Scarlet yeah, Nexus was good. Scarlet okay. Nexus was really good too. Well, it's, it's, it'll get downloaded after Marvel's Avengers, so I'll probably have it sometime next month. So that'll be good. Okay. So with, with Game Pass, do you have to download the game you want to play or can you just you know what? stream it? To be fair, no. I do have okay. access to cloud based gaming. I just don't wanna. Don't wanna. <laughs> yeah, I probably <laughs> I should try it out. Road, I mean, like I if anything, <laughs> podcast integrity, I should be reporting on this. Um right. but I don't wanna. <laughs> I'm going He doesn't uh, want to fall down the rabbit hole. Yeah, maybe if I Next maybe, thing you know he's buying PlayStation now. <laughs> right? Maybe if I go on a trip or something, I'll try it out to see. Like I'll I'll try it on some hotel Wi Fi, see how that goes. Mm. Cause that'll be the true test, I think. Right. You know? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, the true test will be on Wi-Fi that's split between a thousand different people. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna play it on hotel Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play it on my um, <sighs> on my Galaxy Note Eight, <laughs> which at one time was new, but now is not. Right. You know what I really want, but I can't afford right now is one of those like those folding phones. Dude, my uh, one of my friends has it, and I like held it, and I was like, "This is cool. But this is a lot." Like I feel like I would break this shit. I know <laughs> I it looks so dope. Right. <laughs> oh oh man. man, that actually brings me. Maybe I'll talk about it later in the episode. I should have talked about it during current events, but there's something I've been wanting to talk on the podcast for a while. But uh, I'll I'll save it for later. So remind me before the end of the episode to bring it up. Okay. Just my current situation because it, it kind of ties into why I can't afford a phone. Um, right. But okay, so the last piece of news we have. Remember we were talking about Netflix is wanting to get into gaming. Yep. And some people were like, huh. Other people were like, ugh. And I was like, Meh. Yeah. So Netflix recently bought video game developer Night School Studio. They're most famous for making Oxenfree, if you've played that, okay. uh, which is pretty decent, actually. It's a little indie game. And I like that they bought a beloved indie studio because to me, that's kind of a good faith move. And right. they're looking to roll out five mobile gaming titles in select European markets. So they're making a move into gaming a little sooner than I thought they would. The cool thing is, is I think Night School Studio had actually contracted to do a Telltale style game surrounding Stranger Things. Hmm. And it got me to thinking about all of Netflix's IP. And then, oh, yeah. yeah, like they actually have some stuff that they could put forward that's unique to them. And again, what could a studio like Night School Studio do with Netflix money, right? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be like Google and put a little bit of money and then if they don't get an immediate return, just squash the whole project? Or are they going to be like, "Mm, I don't know, Netflix, throw all the money at it until it works because that's how Netflix do. Right. We know how Netflix do because we've seen them do it with movies. Kind of, it's a good move on their part, though. Yeah, I'm low key excited about them getting into gaming. I didn't think I would be, but the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I want this. I think. Yeah, even from just a business standpoint, because like subscriptions, yeah, but having something tangible that someone can purchase from you, multiple people can purchase from you, and you can keep putting out something like that. Well, they may know. even work it into their subscription service. You know, like oh, an yeah, Apple Arcade. Really good. You know yeah. what I mean? Could be that if you have Netflix, you have access to their suite of games. And then that could bring in even more. Because, again, at this point, Amazon, Hulu, and Disney Plus have all either entered or stepped up their game to where Netflix, people can actually go, ah, maybe I don't need Netflix. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's That hasn't been that way in a long time. So their yeah, market share is getting eaten up a bit. I mean, yeah, Disney I Plus know. is They're, crushing uh... it right now. So. Yeah, but Netflix is starting to come out with some bangers. Yeah, yeah. Semi bangers. Yeah, we'll, bangers. we'll we'll talk yeah. about that a little bit later on too, for sure. So it's something I think to keep our eyes on. But uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting enough to bring up, and that actually that about covers it for gaming news. All right, gaming news. So as far as our listener questions this week, we didn't get a new listener question, but. If you recall from a previous episode, we had the listener question about what if the gaming version. So Mm -hmm. a event in the history of video gaming changes and how that affects our current timeline. And a couple of our listeners actually proposed new scenarios that I wanted to bring up because I thought they were interesting. Ron B., longtime listener and submitter of questions, had his own take on what if. He mentioned that over the years, there's been politicians who have tried to censor gaming, getting certain games banned, etc. What if they succeeded? What do you think okay. gaming today would look like? Would everything be like Mario? No mature games? No first-person shooters? No horror games? Realistically, in that scenario, Nintendo probably would completely rule gaming, he says. So he wants to know our hmm. thoughts. What do you think? Okay. If we're talking about the U.S., because there are plenty of other countries that outright ban a bunch of stuff. I was actually watching a Cat Icarus video earlier about games that are banned in multiple countries. And, like, you know, Bully came up and Grand Theft Auto and Mm. Postal and, you know, stuff like that. If it happened in the U.S. to where they were just like, you know what? No no more infomature games, people. Mm -hmm. No more blood. No more sexual content. 
no more cursing, none of that. Then yeah, gaming would be a very different place. <laughs> Do you think because... it would be as robust of an industry? No, I don't think so. Because the main thing that I feel people go to gaming for, what I go to gaming for is an escape. Mm-hmm. Like to experience something that you can't experience in your actual life, in your real life. Like, well, I can not experience to say sex that... in my actual life, so I don't know. No, I look also cursing, okay. <laughs> also violence if I so choose. Yes, but you're gonna get in trouble if you do. That. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's that's part of if the fun, you do isn't the it? Violence. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But uh, <laughs> for instance, I'm not saying I want to go around and shoot a bunch of people because that just that's that's not something that i want to do but in the game no virtually i love murdering yeah virtually it's 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 fun yeah i'm into it but yeah seeing what we 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 know that gaming doesn't affect the masses as like politicians say it does oh yeah oh my god these violent video games should make us go out and they're gonna make us all of the rhetoric that would have been used yeah all the rhetoric that would have been used to accomplish this would have been baseless it's still baseless we have plenty of studies that prove otherwise so yeah well yeah for sure nintendo would be above and beyond of everyone because if everything's censored you don't have the last of us you don't have uh (laughs) You damn near don't have any Marvel games. <laughs> yeah, I Sonic. Like, I mean, I would think I would think Sega would probably still be around because I don't yeah. think I don't think PlayStation PlayStation already tried to be edgy. I mean, some of the more popular games, Twisted Metal, Metal Gear Solid, none of that would have been able to kind of get off the ground yeah. the way. I it think did. JRPGs would be way more popular. Could be. It could be yeah. that gaming died in the U.S. altogether, and it ended up being just an industry in Japan, maybe making Japan a superpower because of all of the uh, revenue it generated, and uh, mm-hmm. could have really hurt the U.S. economy, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. There's there's all kinds of... Implications. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, the major blow is to diversity, right? And creativity, mm-hmm. because it's not just about censorship of certain things. And it's not like a good game, even an escape has to have mature themes. But right. gaming has grown up with us since the boom, the crash, and then the, the rise again. The, the phoenix ashes of gaming, as the it rose. were, in the NES chicken. era, right? Arise, chicken. With that said, if it didn't grow up with us, then we probably may have left it behind or discarded it. And that's not to say that adults don't enjoy games aimed at children. But if that's all they were left to be, you know what I mean? And there was no kind of then it probably wouldn't be as ubiquitous and widespread as it is now, because right now we have games for everyone, for every mood, for every temperament, for every style. And I myself move. From delightful, sweet, and innocent gaming to, you know, the more brutal kind of hardcore stuff back and forth, just depending on my mood. I think a lot of people are like that. So yeah, really, like I'm waiting for uh, Ken of Bridge of Spirits to come out physically so I can buy that. That's a very pixar looking game. Yeah. Is yeah. it for kids? Not necessarily, but it definitely portrays itself as that with the art style. So For sure, for sure. You know. So at the end of the day, when you remove diversity from a thing diversity of thought creativity ideas when you limit something then you lose that's just all there is to it so the, the ways in which yep. you lose we could talk about that all day mm-hmm. yeah that's 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 our thoughts on that ron b and then on tiktok the game juice had commented mm-hmm. what if nintendo caught up in power With PlayStation and Xbox, do you think it would change much? So what the Game Juice is saying is, what if... And I would like to go all the way back to, you know, when we started to have the big three. Like back in PlayStation 2. Yeah. Yeah. I think the divergence really happened Xbox 360, PS3, Wii. Right? Mm. So what if we had the Wii with all of its gimmicks and everything? But graphically and processor-wise, it was on par it was already HD, like 360 and PS3. And from that point, Nintendo kept pace with the other two systems. What do you think? Well, the funny thing is that the Wii, underpowered, already outsold those systems. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's... What kind of devastation are we talking here? Because I think oh the only God. thing that kept the other systems in the running was that the Wii wasn't super friendly, the third-party titles. Yeah, and that's that's where... You know, that's where it would suffer. 
Mm-hmm. It was still like, difficult to if, develop for. Yeah. Yeah. And are we talking like the latest systems? Yeah, those included. I right. think the disparity really occurred during the 360 generation. Mm-hmm. And then from there, that they just stayed behind. Okay. I would say now, let's say the, the Switch 4K came out now. Mm-hmm. The Switch Pro. Yeah, like it came out, it literally came out fall 2020 alongside the other systems. Yeah, I don't think it would change much. And the reason I say that is because of Nintendo's history and track record. You've got people that have been gaming on Xbox and PlayStation for two decades, 20 years. Yeah, back to the 360, eh? Yeah, and never and never had a Nintendo console or was just we're just never inter- interested in it. Now, why do you suppose they bought the 360 instead of the Nintendo console at the time? It came out first. Okay. Yeah, it came out first. It was relatively cheap. It was cheaper than the PlayStation 3. The titles that were available to play on the 360 were more, you know, mature, more competitive. You know, you had your first first third-person shooters on there. I would say Xbox Live gave it the edge. But oh, here, yeah. here's the thing. Here's the what if. If Nintendo was keeping the pace graphically and processing power-wise with Xbox, more developers because of Nintendo's name brand recognition. Because, again, ask any non-gamer in the 90s and the early 2000s to point yeah. at a gaming system and say what it is, regardless of what they're pointing. <laughs> yeah, that's a Nintendo. That's a Nintendo. That's, that's a Game a Boy. <laughs> that's a Game Boy. That's a that's a PSP. Yeah, I said that. The Game Boy. Like Right. So <laughs> exactly. brand name recognition gives you the edge. It's the reason why people think band aid instead of bandage yeah. strip or they think exactly. chicken McNugget Adhesive instead of chicken strip. nugget, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or Kleenex instead of tissue. Nintendo yeah. instead of whatever the hell it actually is. So when you pair that with having the graphical power and the ease of developing for as the other systems Nintendo is creating those relationships that they don't have during this current generation. That changes the whole landscape that paired with Nintendo's already voracious following and IP. I'm thinking it's got a lot more developers working with it on a regular basis, a lot more games in its, its library, a lot less exclusives that you can only play on PlayStation or Xbox and not Nintendo. And then pretty soon they're finding it a lot harder to compete. Maybe that might have been the end of Xbox, actually. Or perhaps PlayStation, since they were the ones screwing up during that generation. Yeah, but I think I think now, we're at the point where gaming is now, people have chosen their sides. They've chosen them. Yeah, but if again, ex- if it changed back then, then their sides oh, back have changed. Then. That's what I'm saying. Okay, see, You're not listening well, to me. No, I, I, the, Wii, no, I, <laughs> the Wii can do what the 360 the and the PlayStation okay. 3 can do. Okay, because that's the first he time said the, the new system. The new system. No, so I'm thinking if a Switch, if a Switch Pro came out now, and I even said this, I said if a no, Switch if, Pro came out now. No, because it because that's what's happening. That's already life. Right. That's the that's the reality we live in now. And the Nintendo's always a generation behind, right? Gotcha. So that's just going to continue to happen. But Nintendo catching up in power. When did it? When did it fall behind in power? 360 and PlayStation 3. Right. Okay, I'll say this quote-unquote hardcore gamers would have stayed away from the Wii simply because of the controller and Mm. motion controls. You think so, huh? I think so. Now, if they created a different controller, more traditional controller, they came out with and it didn't really have a gimmick, yes, but that's never been Nintendo's thing. They always have some sort... We've talked about this before. They always have some sort of gimmick that sells their consoles, millions of consoles at first. So I think if the Wii was as powerful, yeah, they may have sold a bit more. But again, that controller was probably a turnoff for a lot of people, even though it sold so many. Like it's <laughs> no, I see what it's you so mean. weird when you think about it makes you wonder, like, how though, many if, people are available were, to buy things. Yeah, you know? no, if there if there were more traditional games being made for the system because the system could handle them, like the reports maybe coming from 360 or PlayStation 3 or. If more third-party developers were courting the Wii, maybe they would have developed a quote-unquote pro controller like they did for the Wii U, like they did for the right. Switch, right? Because at this point, mm-hmm. they're like, we don't want to miss out on that money. Let's make it so people can use a traditional controller if they really want to. I think right. with the Wii, they just knew. they were. It was a very niche system, and it did exactly what it set out to do. It did not set out to give you a traditional gaming experience, and they really didn't give mm-hmm. a shit about that. 
But if they had that kind of processing power and they were being courted by a lot of third party developers making, you know, quote unquote, more traditional games, maybe that would have created demand for a more traditional controller. I don't know. Just because Nintendo catches up in power, it doesn't mean they're they're not still Nintendo. So, yeah, I I see what that's the thing I like about Nintendo. Like they don't have to be the best graphically. No, they never did. They never so, did. It's, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, their games are enough. Their games are enough. It's all about the creativity and what you do with what you have. I agree with that. And graphics are never going to trump gameplay or how fun a game is just to experience. You know what I mean? Like they add yeah. to it. It's a component, certainly. But I mean, there's a lot of us that still enjoy playing like 2D games and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, when you have all these indie games coming out and they're getting universally praised, it's like, do graphics really matter? Not terrible. I mean, some people they do. Honestly, yeah. some people they do. But I think they matter as much as a genre reference matters to me or you. Mm-hmm. A game, if a game hits, it hits. The graphics yeah. are incidental. They either add to or detract, but they're not the end all be all. So, right. Yeah. That With that said, what if. yeah, that's a good yeah. what if. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and we're getting long in the tooth on this episode too. Watch. Yeah. I was worried. I was worried we wouldn't. But we really know how to ramble, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, speaking of rambling, I'm going to get to rambling with you this week about what you're feeling. I am feeling what we was talking about earlier. Netflix putting out some banger shows. Mm-hmm. One in particular. Everybody's talking about it. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. It is a Korean show that Netflix came out with, I think, a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And the, everybody's just buzzing about it. I binged the entire first season. I'm going to say first season because there might be a second season. I don't know. I think there's nine episodes and they're each like an hour long. Mm-hmm. And I watch. I stayed up until 4 a.m. one night watching. <laughs> oh, I know those. Feels. Every single episode. <laughs> and I haven't stayed up that late in a while. But I was like, at the end of each episode, it's like, well, shit, I got to watch the next one. Yeah, when I when I first like, started I watching uh, sleep on this, when I first started watching Mr. Robot, I binged a lot of it in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, then I kind of fell off, much to Ron B's dismay. But I'm probably going to get back into it eventually. So yeah, but uh, Squid Game, like I said, it's a Korean show, and the premise is a bunch of people who are in debt are contacted by this organization to play in a series of games, and if they win this series of games, they win a large cash prize. Only thing is, if you lose in the games that they have you play, then you die. Yeah, if you're so eliminated, we've seen, you are eliminated. Yeah, if you jump in the rope and you miss one of the jumps, pow, right in the kisser. <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of the games. I just, I don't want to spoil yeah. any other games for anybody on there. But I was like, you jump in rope is... with a with a lightsaber. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you miss, then your, your head gets lopped off. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh, here's the thing: Netflix has been putting out some good Korean shows, and if you listen to us, you know that we love Sweet Home. That's oh, Sweet another Home's Korean so show. I love Sweet. You Home. know that I love Kingdom. That's mm-hmm. another Korean show. Like I, I need to go on Netflix and just because apparently just, they just be putting out my shit, so I'm, I need to just I'm go really... to Co- Korean shows and just we, look definitely. at what they got. We need to start watching more <laughs> Korean shows. But I'm really into Korean horror. They do a really mm-hmm. good job. Because, you know, it's a different type of flavor and even different than, like, say, Japanese horror or Chinese horror, which I like the least, probably. But uh, Korean Mm -hmm. horror, they do a really good job with creating tension and Mm -hmm. being creepy. Like, they don't rely too heavily on jump scares. They rely more on creating an atmosphere and making you worry about somebody. Like, really worry. And Mm -hmm. I love that about their shows. So, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, but this show... And this has been happening with me a lot recently where I'm watching these shows, especially ones that come from different regions. Mm -hmm. And they have me thinking about stuff from a Korean's perspective Mm -hmm. that I never would have thought about before. Oh, yeah. Like there like there's a this is actually the first episode. There's an instance where the main character, he's he's kind of like a deadbeat dad, but he's not. But his family and his daughter, his ex-wife and her husband, they're going to move away. And his mother tells him, well, she's going to move away to America and then she's going to forget how to speak Korean and she's not going to be able to talk to you. You're going to be like a stranger to her. I was like, fuck, like that's like I've never thought of that because as an American and someone who speaks English, you just assume no one's going to forget how to speak English because it's spoken so many different places, you know? 
Yeah. But when you have languages that are spoken in just very specific sects of the world, Mm -hmm. that's something I've never thought about. If Nora went to live overseas and she learned a different language, she came back and she did not know how to talk to me, I would be devastated. Yeah, because the girl is young enough where, you know, if she lives over there long enough, she could actually forget how to speak Korean. Yeah, and that, like, that was kind of heartbreaking to me. I was like, oh. Yeah, it's really sad. These are issues that I've never had to think about or deal with. Although, to be honest, I feel like the grandma just really wanted the girl to stay and was trying to scare him. Because why would her parents forget to speak to her in Korean? You know what I mean? And, you know, I get that, but at the same time, like, if she's going to American school and stuff and she's gonna start learning to speak english and she's basically gonna be speaking english to all of her friends unless mm-hmm. she finds like some korean friends that know how to speak her language then you know but that's just that's just one of those things that had me thinking really deeply about how not out of touch but how much we don't know about each other as people yeah uh different races and ethnicities all that it's just it's yeah. crazy whatever but, whatever i think about when i watch the shows especially in korea or in largely populated areas is how we live in fucking palaces compared to most of the world. No. There are, I'm not even going to say millions, there are billions of people who their entire living situation is like one of my closets. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that, that's not that's not me trying to do some kind of brag or humble brag. Right. That's like right. literally one of the shows I watch where the, there's this young college kid and all he can afford is literally a narrow space where it can fit a bed and maybe a TV and that is it. And that's yeah. just what he lives in. And he has to share a kitchen, a bathroom with everybody else on his floor. Like, it's a dorm room. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, Squid Game is a very good show. And this is another weird thing. I want to say the acting is good. Mm-hmm. But then again, I don't speak Korean. So I don't know if it's hitting how no, it's No, I say to, it's but good. It but it, it makes me feel good when I'm watching it. So I'm going to say the acting is good. No, no. I, I think there, you can there are it. some Yeah, there are some overacting characters in it. And that's fine. Because I feel like you need that kind of just to remind you. <laughs> and some of that can be like, cultural, yeah. right? Like the mm-hmm. way that people can overact. I've, I've seen that too. Yeah. But but it tells a very emotional story. Mm. And I had my heart broken a couple times Aww. during that show. Crying. I was like, oh my God, I can't. What? I don't want to spoil anything, especially for you. Because I, I, I feel like we're on the same wavelength when we watch these uh, Korean shows, especially where it's just like, we kind of get the same thing that they're supposed to give to us. Yeah, yeah. No, I caught but, the first episode, so I'm keen on finishing the show. I haven't, I don't think I'm going to binge it like you did, but I'm going to watch it for sure. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. It sounds yeah, fun. It was, yeah. You know? <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> no, ca- no caveats for this show. What's it's funny, though, is I watched the first episode while I was playing Radical Red, so I, I watched it dubbed. Um, ah, gross. <laughs> gross. So I, I, didn't, I didn't have to read it. I know you think it's gross, but you know what? As far as dubs go, the dub on that show is actually fantastic. The only dubbing that I heard was the beginning where the little kids are playing. He's yeah. like, hey, look, it's your mom. And I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I swear no, to no, you. No, no. I swear, I mean, not that you need to, because obviously the preferred way is to sub, but if you're not going to, like, if you're washing dishes or whatever, and you need to switch to dub, it, as far as not shows, no, it's great, actually. The okay. actors they picked to do the dubs, they do fantastically, and they're not just like, it's not like Brad and Emily doing the dubs. Mm-hmm. It sounds like Koreans who speak English, okay. you know what I mean? It just, it sounds more right to your ears, because it sounds like people who can speak korean Brad just speaking english for your yeah you know yeah we you know how you watch a dub and, it, and it's just yeah. like somebody who's clearly korean and then they sound like me and you're like mm, mm. i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that yeah i don't know I about that like there are plenty of english speaking koreans but that's yeah. just me <laughs> yeah somebody went out and hired them for this dub and i appreciate it because it does hit because again i think they can also tell because when you have somebody from a different culture or that doesn't speak the language at all doing the dub then they won't pick up on the subtleties of the actor's performance. But if you right. have somebody that actually speaks Korean doing the dub in English, they do pick up on the subtleties of the actor's performance. And that comes through. This dub is good. Yeah. I have to say again, yeah. I'm with you okay. when it comes to live action subs, you got to do subs. Mm-hmm. But if you're on the fence about the show, like I was, you wasn't sure if you're going to dig it or not. And you're like, ah, I'll watch it while I do some grinding in, in this Pokemon game. And that's exactly what I did, and I still enjoyed it very much. Now I'm going to go back and watch the rest. So Dope, dope, dope. So, yeah, Squid Game, that's my shit. Mike, what are you feeling this week? Oh, man. 
I caught it bad this week. What'd you catch? I caught Call Me By Your Name. Call me when you mm. need. <laughs> Montero, me. man. Mon- I mean, you yeah, know yeah, that yeah. recently Lil Nas X dropped Montero as an album, right? Mm-hmm. Have you had a chance to listen to any of it? I've heard like the three singles that he has. but What are the singles off that album? Because I don't listen to radio. Uh, you know, Call Me By Your Name, mm-hmm. Industry Baby. Ah, uh, with Jack and, Harlow? Okay. Yeah, and All I Want, or What I Want. It's something I want. I that's what I want. About, that's what you're talking that's about. That's what I want. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which I'm not a big that's fan of that one. That's what I fucking that want. Song. Yeah. Yeah. Not a big fan of that song, but. <laughs> Somebody needs like, me. Yeah, I know that right. one. Yeah, the the album is, it's a journey. And, and actually, mm-hmm. I learned a lot about him just through listening to the lyrics and stuff. He does not have a very good relationship with his mother. I did not know that. I don't follow up mm-hmm. on like celebrity gossip or news or whatever, but it's really good. Doja Cat's on there. Megan The Stallion. Mm-hmm. Elton John got a credit. Elton John, yeah, yeah I don't he was know. In a little uh, commercial with oh. him for some uh, fast food company. Miley Cyrus is in it, and that's one of my favorite songs on the album. And I'm not even really a Miley Cyrus fan, but I just right. love the song. I'm more a Hannah Montana fan myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was even a song that was giving me Frank Ocean realness. There's a song called Void, and it's just very soulful and it's very Frank Ocean. And Little Nas X obviously doesn't have like the singing chops of a Frank Ocean. No shade. It's just they're right. they're different types of musicians. But the tone and the lyrics and the song itself, like everything, I was like, he was listening to a lot of Channel Orange when he wrote this song. Yeah. <laughs> but to me, that hit because I I'm a huge Frank Ocean fan. So I recommend this album wholeheartedly. And there are a lot of people out there, and I hear this all the time, like, oh, modern hip hop is terrible, and I hate music nowadays, and blah 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 blah. And I feel so bad for those people because, yes, music is different. Music evolves. That's what happens. Music changes. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with loving the old stuff that you grew up with. But, you know, once you open your heart to this new shit, there's a lot of really great artists out here. And music is not dead. And rap is not dead. And a lot of hip-hop nowadays is actually fucking fantastic. Yep. You know who I have to thank for getting into modern hip-hop, actually? Who's that? I Marquise. Marquise. Where are we about to eat at? Where are we about to where are we about to eat at? Chocolate. Where are we about to eat at? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The guy that does the uh remixes you see on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. I was jamming on I Marquis just because I think it's funny and hilarious and I love his dope ass mixes. And then YouTube just starts to autoplay other like music. I discovered Travis Scott, like Doja Cat, like all these different artists, Jack Harlow included. And I started listening to all that, you know, all this modern hip hop. And I'm like, I'm really getting into this shit. And I already like Lil Nas X just because of his antics. I think he's wild and I think he's hilarious. And I love how he trolls <laughs> and like mm-hmm. in Satan's shoes. And Montero's a fucking bop. My only critique of Montero is why is it so short? Yeah. Like, in the fact, the album uh, itself. Yeah. Well, well okay. not the album. To be fair, though, a lot of the bangers on the album are also short. Mm -hmm. the best songs that he's ever done, the the songs of his that I love the most just end too quickly. And I think that's probably the best critique you can have is I just want more of it, please more of it. Right. So yeah, give me more little Nas X definitely, but I love this album and I've been listening to it a lot while I've been at work lately and it's just been getting me through. So Yeah, yeah, watch the, uh, Watch the That's What I Want video. I need to, I'm going to go do that. I'm not even a big fan of the video, but he like straight up, makes the fuck out with the other dude in the video like a lot it's heavy i was like god damn they don't even (laughs) (laughs) they don't even do this with the women in the rap video yeah no he is is unapologetically gay and you kind of have to respect it you know what i mean oh yeah definitely do definitely do because he's like fuck fuck what you think because it's know, a lot harder to do that. I mean, what it is. don't let me speak for you. I think but I think you would agree. It's a lot harder to do that even in the black community. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, definitely. Like, for sure. But yeah, low props to him, man. He's doing his thing. Yeah, he don't give a shit. He said, man. I'm paid. I'm gay. Deal with it. I'm gonna, you ain't got to look at it, but I'm going to put it <laughs> put it out give there. Give Satan a lap dance. You're going to watch it. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Like, I can't, I can't help but be, like, mesmerized by his videos and stuff because I'm like, this dude is really doing his thing. He out yeah. there. No, it's and, um, <laughs> it's peak vulnerability. And again, I have mm-hmm. to respect it. I have to because it's it's brave as shit. I don't know how confident he is in real life, but he's putting forth a persona that I think is going to be you know really empowering and inspiring for 
a lot of people, an entire generation, sure. really. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for him as an artist, and I'm really enjoying his new album, and I think y'all should check it out for sure. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so I mentioned earlier about what's going on with me. So I don't talk. Well, <laughs> it's funny. I was getting ready to say I don't talk about my personal life on this podcast a lot. That is a fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> talk about my personal life all the time. But I wanted to mention this. I recently hit a crossroads where I could work more. Like I was, you know, doing the the forty hour a week daily grind, right? Mm-hmm. And I had a crossroads where I could do more work, but make more money than I've ever made, like a dumb amount of money. I had that I had that job offer on the table. And then this other door opened where I could make no money, but I only had to work 20 hours a week. So they're paying me peanuts, but the work is easy and I'm off by noon, right? Mm-hmm. At first, I took the, the big paying job, but then I was kind of dragging my feet on, you know, onboarding. And at one point, I think the person in HR was like, do you even want this job? And I was like, huh, I don't want this job. <laughs> and we we did the math and realized that, you know, with some changes that are happening in our family coming up, and I'll be talking about that later, and where we're at right now with my career and my wife's career and my personal pursuits like this podcast and everything, that me having more free time would actually help our family and we can afford it. We can afford it, but I'm not going to be rich. Up to this right. point, just with my regular job, I was at the point where not only were our bills paid, but I could literally just buy things without thinking about it. I did not live paycheck to paycheck. I have not lived paycheck to paycheck for the last two years. Mm-hmm. With this new job, I would have been disgustingly rich and would have had to like made an effort <laughs> to spend money to go paycheck to paycheck, like really make an effort. With this job I have now, if we're not careful, not only will we be living paycheck to paycheck, but we might be backsliding a bit. So mm-hmm. again, our bills are paid. But I cannot be as lavish as I have been in the past, and that's that's right. an adjustment I need to make. But with all this free time, I've been a lot happier, and I've been able to pursue a lot more projects. I've been able to keep up on our TikTok. We're actually uh, going to start a new podcast, and we'll be giving more information about that in the days to come. But we're joined by some fan favorites and some good friends of ours that we're going to do a collaboration with them to start a brand new podcast. And the only reason I have time to edit and manage that is because I decided to take this part-time job instead. Oh yeah. It's so really it's, too, yeah. yeah, it's really scary. Please wish me luck. I am going to try to get into a little bit of thrifting and reselling like you do to, to offset some costs. And I hope that that goes well, but again, I'm not near as good as you are. Um, nah, it's all learning, man. But yeah, I am, cautiously optimistic happy and also scared shitless right now so <laughs> all those things wrapped into one and if people are, are wondering that's where my headspace is at right now so if i want to get that off my chest all right man hey you got it yeah so we have patreon <laughs> so <laughs> i i kind of extra i'm hoping people take notice of that because i i may need you know, i may need that if i start to really kind of go at this full time so we'll see Anyways, speaking of getting money from different places, we need to give it up for our sponsors, so don't change that dial, because we'll be right back after these messages. All right, and we're back. So, the people out there, Mr. Full Metal Merc, they're wanting to buy some used games, some rare games, some awesome games, some goodies, maybe more. How can you help them out with that? And I can help them out. By letting them know they can check out the eBay store at ebay.com slash str slash gamer goodies and more. I sell video games. I sell toys. I sell electronics. I sell basically anything that I can get my grubby little hands on to get to you. And I got some really good shit, y'all. So y'all need to check that store out. Uh, y'all can hit me up on Instagram at gamer goodies more and on Twitter at goodies underscore more and i want to reiterate i got some really good shit on the store right now <laughs> you check that out so i can get it out to you awesome and as far as the podcast goes again i say this all the time but we upload new episodes to our hub at anchor.fm slash player two is entered the pod every single sunday but our podcast is also available on other platforms like breaker google podcast overcast podcast radio public po- apple podcast and spotify almost didn't make it that time <laughs> uh, you can find us on all the social medias. We're on TikTok.com slash at Player2 is entered the pod. Facebook.com slash Player2 is entered the pod. YouTube at Player2 is entered the podcast. So subscribe, follow, get those notifications. We appreciate it. 
you want to support us, you can do so at patreon.com slash player two is under the pod. And you can contact us via our social media or by emailing us at mcpaperstacks at gmail.com. If you have listener questions, guest suggestions, feedback, etc. If you want to find me personally, I'm on Twitter at Mike Peterson AL. I do Twitch streaming, although I am pulling that back. So look for me on Fridays. I'm going to keep that Friday show for now. And that's uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, playing Evil Within right now. And that is our show. That was a good one. I a think lot so. Of fun this episode. Yeah. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. So uh, we appreciate y'all coming out to listen to us. We love you. And we will see you next week. Take care. Peace.